Yeah, we can start with the uh, personal projects. Maybe I'll start off. Um, so, uh, yeah, my name is Kevin Schiffer, and uh, I work at the Things Industries as a uh, front end developer and uh, UX and UI designer. So, um, I prim primarily work on the console uh, here at the company. And um, so, uh, yeah, it's been very exciting to see uh, how we did the rollout for uh, B3 TTN and to see how people are uh, catching on and um, especially um, interested in uh, feedback that, is, that will be coming in now uh, after this uh, release. Uh, so, um, yeah, so that's my uh, quick introduction. Maybe we, uh, maybe we go with Neira next. So uh, my name is Neira. I work as a technical content writer at the Things Industries. And I help uh, Adrian to um, work with our integrators on the third party uh, application integrations. So, um, if there is someone in the audience, maybe that's uh, potentially our uh, next uh, integrator, we would be happy to um, collaborate and add uh, uh, new integrations to uh, the thing stack. Um, this is also my first uh, conference and the first time I'm uh, doing a session, so uh, I'm really excited and I hope everything um, uh, will be interesting and it turns out great. Good to have uh, a lot of people watching us. Maybe. Yes, so good morning everyone, first of all. Nera already partially introduced me, so I just have to add a couple more words. I work on stack engineering and operations. So my main uh, responsibility is the development of the backend of the stack with more emphasis on integrations. And I also do operations for our private and public networks, both V2 and V3. Uh, this is not my first conference, but I'm really glad to be doing a session for the first time. So it's going to be really exciting. And I, uh, I hope I can answer your questions, be them about integration or just about the stack in general. That would be it for me. And I pass over to Ben. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Ben. I'm a technical content writer at the Things Industries, uh, and I manage the documentation. So make it as easy as possible for everybody to use um, the Things stack. Um, and so I'm really looking forward also to seeing as we go hands on through the thing stack, what kind of questions come up and, um, and, yeah, and how we can clarify things for people. So <clears throat> would uh, lead into the demonstration. So what we're going to do is we thought it would be, it would be nice for people to see hands on how the thing stack is used and how you might get started um, when you start using the thing stack. So uh, we're going to add a gateway and then create an application and add a device and then create an integration so that uh, you can see how you might uh, send the data from your device to another uh, third party application. And uh, we're going to split that into parts. So we have Kevin, who is one of the main architects of the um, V3 console, who will do the uh, application and device part. Neira is, um, writes a lot of our um, documentation about integrations, and so she will do the integrations part, and Adrian will share adding a gateway. So um, please uh, be vocal in the chat, and if there's anything that we can clarify, um, just write it down. If you have any questions along the way, we'll try to answer those. And uh, yeah, so I think we're ready to kick it off, um, and I'm going to pass over to Kevin. Um, to, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to pass over to Adrian. I'm going to pass over to Kevin to introduce the thing stack, and then Kevin's going to pass to Adrian to, to do the gateways. <laughs> OK. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, yeah, let me just share my screen. Um, so um, hopefully it's working. Whoa, inception. Okay, so now uh, I hope you can uh, see my screen now, but uh, I guess you can. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, this is uh, the new V3 console. I guess uh, most of you guys have already seen it now. Um, so if you want to also take a look and you already have 
a uh, account uh, for uh, v2 then uh, you can uh, sign in uh, right away uh, the link is here i think ben will also post it in the chat and um well yeah um i think it's best if we just pass over to uh, uh to adrian to show you how we uh do onboarding of gateways and then i will just uh, get back right away with adding applications and devices and we will explain everything along the way so uh, let's go adrian so please first stop sharing the screen <laughs> yes okay one moment and i'm going to share my chrome screen over here so when you onboard the gateway fundamentally the onboarding process for each gateway is different the gateway that i'm going to show is a lorix one gateway this is a, a clean slate gateway no configuration whatsoever the first step when you actually connect the gateway would be to change the default admin password we're going to skip this one now uh, but the main things that we're interested in is setting up the packet forwarder, the forwarder that sends the packets from the gateway to the network. And in order to do that, we will need to use the console. The console allows you to do this via the gateways uh, page. This is an overview of the gateways that you already have. And since we want to add the gateway, we click on the button that says add the gateway. We are in. We have two main identifiers. The gateway identifier. In this case, uh, this is a unique name that's global to the network. I'm going to call mine Adrian Lorix One Demo. And there is also this gateway UI. The gateway UI is generally found on the gateway itself. It's a physical sticker. In this case, my gateway UI is also available via, via the web interface. So I'm just going to take it from here and copy paste it. After filling in the gateway UI, the last thing that we need to actually set up is the frequency plan. Basically, this is based on the region in which the gateway runs. I'm going to pick up the Europe A68870 uh, recommended plan. And that's it. I just have to create my gateway now. And the gateway has been registered in the console, but now we have to actually set up the, the connection into the gateway itself. For this particular gateway, the interface is really friendly, so I just have to go to LoRa Forwarder. I pick up the packet forwarder that I would like to actually use. In this case, it's going to be LoRa Basic Station. I click Apply. Right now, there is no configuration whatsoever for the, uh, for the packet forwarder, so I'm going to enable the LoRaWAN network server. And now it's asking me for the address and the port. The address I can already pick up from the uh, from the gateway page in the stack, so I'm just going to copy it from here and paste it in the address. But now it's asking me for the port. And the ports you can actually get from our documentation. In the reference section, you have a networking article. And the networking article will tell you the port for each of the applications that you're interested in. Since we are looking for the LoRa Basic Station LNS and we want to use TLS for end-to-end uh, -end encryption, we use port 8887. So that's what I'm going to do now. And we want to enable TLS. In order to use TLS, most of the gateways will actually ask you what is the certificate authority that should be used for uh, to in order to validate the certificate of the server. We have an article on this as well. So we go back to reference, we scroll down, and we go over to root certificates. Here is a large description on why you need root certificates and which ones are generally used. We, for the, for the deployment that we have for TTM, we will need the SRG rootx one CA, which I'm going to download. And I'm going to then upload it into the gateway configuration. So I go over to Downloads, I select the PEM file I just downloaded. And finally, I need to actually authenticate my gateway to the network server. Otherwise, anyone could connect the gateway and say, hey, this is uh, the gateway. Uh, please allow me to send traffic. In order to do this, we have to create an API key. We create an API key in the console page. I'm going to be calling this specific API key linking. And it's always a good idea to give the least amount of permission as possible to an API key. So we're going to allow this particular API key to be used only for linking. After we click create, the API key will be created. This is the last time you will actually be seeing this uh, API key in the console. 
and that's fine. In case you need the new one, you just recreate it. Don't uh, try to reuse API keys. I've copied the API key. I'm going to set it up in the authentication token set, uh, settings page and click Save. Configuration has been updated. Please start basic restart the server. In this case, it's just going to be a start. And we can check the logs in just a bit. The gateway is starting and the forwarder has is currently running and connected to the network server. We can actually see this in the traffic page of the gateway in the live data. The gateway has been connected. It has sent a bit of information and retrieved the, uh, uh, the frequency plan from the network server and is actually sending traffic. Traffic, which I can actually check that is being received by the gateway itself. So here are all of the packets that are getting picked up in my home right now. And they are also being sent to the network server. You will find this error quite often, the fail to handle message no devices match up link. And this is not a reason to panic. This actually means that the packet itself is sent by a device that's not registered in TTN. In this case, this is one, uh, a watering meter that's uh, private around me. And that should be all. Right now, the gateway is connected and it's sending traffic and any new device that you may add can use this gateway connection. Uh, this should be all for now, and I'm going to pass it over back to Kevin. Yes. Uh, so indeed, let me share my screen again. All right. Adrian, I think uh, you guys saw that uh, it's uh, quite easy to uh, add a new gateway. So I have also already added one, but maybe first for uh, the sake of completion. Um, so if I go uh, to uh, this, if I go to the console, I will see uh, a login screen. So you'll be able to log in with the things ID or with credentials, but credentials not really uh, possible uh, for anyone uh, except uh, admins. So uh, usually you would go with things ID. And um, so, uh, yeah, uh, okay. So I already uh, signed in here um, because otherwise you would see uh, a login screen here. And there you can log in with your credential from uh, the V2 or with your uh, things network account basically so and then you you're uh, in okay um so indeed let's see how it works with uh, adding gateways uh with adding uh, applications and end devices you see you already already um, uh, registered. So I will do one for this session. Uh, I will call it TTN V3. Yeah, you can give a name or a description. I won't do it now, but uh, it's uh, possible. So that's basically all you need to do to create an application. Uh, it's super simple. Um, so um, yeah, now you have the, the application ready already. So what uh, we have to do now is to add an, uh, an end device. So I have, uh, I don't know if you, can you actually see me? Yeah, you can see me. So I have uh, things note, uh, without the, uh, the casing. And uh, so I will want to, um, So what I will do is uh, I will go to uh, add end device naturally. And so you have two options here. Um, you can uh, onboard the end device using the, uh, the things device repository um, or manually. But um, we're out of this new um, things device uh, repository onboarding flow because basically all you need to do is uh, to look for your uh, end device uh, by the brand. So as you can see, we already have a lot of uh, different factors in here. And of course, the things product is also in there. So I will select the things products, uh, the model, which is the things node. 
we currently only have one version, so we don't really need to select anything else here. Our, uh, zero. Uh, select this one. So, and then basically, once you entered all this information, what you have to do is, uh, yeah, <clears throat> is entering the registration data. So um, I will choose the frequency plan. So for 863-870, you have two. We always want uh, the second one. But basically, all that matters is that uh, if you have a gateway, that it runs on the same frequency plan. Otherwise, you won't be able to receive any data. My gateway also runs on. So I will select this one. Uh, then you need to enter the dev UI, app UI, and app key. So I already um, copied it, it out. So if you own uh, the things note, you know that you can get this information um, by uploading a, a sketch to the things note. And then you can use the serial monitor to the app UI uh, and the. the, the Here and paste in here. Then go to app UI, paste it in here as well. And then the app key, I mean, usually you would uh, yeah, likely generate one here and then upload it to the to your sketch. But since I have one already, I will just use this one. Also, obviously, usually you wouldn't share your app key with anyone, but for the sake of this demonstration, uh, I will do it anyway. So I set up the app key and also give a name to this end device. So I will call it session node. And basically, that's it. You click on register the end device. Registered. So what I will do now is I will power on this um, this things node. One second. Almost. Almost got it. Yes. So now it's powered on. So hopefully we will be seeing a join request uh, soon, and then you will see that the uh yeah uh, the end device is they see it already tried accept so it succeeded uh okay we see one failure here so let's just see uh what's going on here we have to fail yeah i i tried before sometimes the connection i have here that my uh uh, gateway is running on. It's sometimes a bit wonky, so sometimes I just have to power cycle a couple of times and then hope that it connects. So as you can see, this is live. So there's, but uh, I will just try to power cycle again. <clears throat> and if it doesn't work, uh, don't worry. We have uh, like a backup uh, uh, backup application running as well. Let me just power cycle again. But I'd really like to show you how it works with this application. But yeah, while it tries to reconnect, uh, as you can already see, um, we have uh, the data view here. So this is basically the panel where you are able to examine uh, all the data that is coming or all the events, the events that are associated with uh, this particular uh, antivirus. So you have one live data view here, uh, which this one is just for this end device. You have a general data view here for the whole application. So if you have multiple uh, end devices, you will see the, the events that are associated with, with all the end devices of the application. And so it doesn't want to work. So maybe I will just uh, let it try a couple of more times, but I will switch over to uh, my other application, um, which I know is definitely working. Uh, which uh, also has uh, some uh, uh, some uh, S1 device registered, which is the Arduino Uno. So here you can see that. Uh, data is coming through. So this is basically how it looks like if data came through. So we have a payload here with the temperature. 
uh, we can examine it also in more detail here if we want to. Okay. So uh, once you are at that stage, um, basically your end device is successfully registered. So what we will try doing now is to go with some uh, integrations. So if you go to the integrations tab, you will see the MQTT webhooks pops up storage integrations, which I will get into later in the lower cloud. We will just show you uh, a webhook. I can go to add a webhook. See, there's already a lot of different templates here that you can choose from for uh, all the different integrators um, that we uh, that have um, submitted a template for the thing stack. Uh, but a webhook here, custom from scratch, and I will just uh, uh, just call it test webhook. Former format, I would choose JSON. Uh, I have this uh, yeah um, tryout uh, webhook uh, application here. Uh, I'll just copy the URL. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, I will paste it. Uh, Dominic API key we don't need. Uh, also, no more additional headers. Uh, so we will just uh, forward all the uplink messages to this webhook uh, at the webhook. Oh, test webhook already exists, so I just call it test webhook two. Uh, webhook here. So you see, it's created right now. So what we should hear in a bit is uh, uplink. We will see uh, the data that is coming into this. Webhook side here. So just let's wait for a moment. Oops. Let's wait for a moment. Uh, somebody yeah, recommended there it is. Somebody recommended maybe you disable the yeah. camera, your camera while you're streaming because your audio is dropping out a little bit. Oh, okay. Worth a try, I guess. Uh, yeah, sorry. I hope it's working a bit, a bit better now. But anyway, as you can see, um, yeah, we got the data coming through here. So you get the whole payout uh, of uh, this uplink message, which you can, then can use, of course, to plug it into your own application. And you can see it through one for every uplink message. And uh, so, yeah. Um, all right. So there is one thing. This might connect. But I just want to make sure that I just don't. Uh, Talk and nobody can understand what we can hear 90% of what you said. Oh. Every once in a while, it breaks. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So, um, yeah, so that is how um, uh, adding a webhook works. So, now let's see how uh, storage integration works. So, we also have uh, storage integration. So, basically, if you want to store uh, data that's been coming from the application or also from a particular end device, you can use storage integration. So uh, you just go to the storage integration tab uh, and then click on activate. And that's basically all you need to do. And so now you get uh, also here like an example URL, which we which I will also use right away. Um, I go to Postman, basically, it's just for me a simple way to, uh, to make uh, requests. So I will uh, wait a second. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, so I will enter this um, uh, URL here. As you can see, you have a uh, type here. So you uh, can, uh, yeah, watch um, the, the, the storage for uh, every type of. Um, if you go, you can see also a bit more information so you can. Uplink, join, accept, downing, and so on and so forth. I will use the uplink message and go back to Postman. Uh, put it here. And also, one thing I miss doing is, of course, we need an API key. So I will go ahead, go to the API key um, tab, uh, a new API key. And as Adrian already said, you will want to. to least amount of rights to every API key that you create. So in this case, we only need the read application traffic. I'll create this one, uh, copy it out here. And here for the authorization. 
uh, bureau token, paste it in here. And also we can set the limits, see how many messages we will be getting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there is coming. So these are basically the, the, the messages that have been stored in the storage integration. Uh, so I think this is now uh, an ascending order. So if you want to have the uh, the, uh, the most recent one, you need to use the sort. Uh, but yeah, this is basically how you use storage integration. So yeah, as you can see, it's um, it's uh, quite simple to um, get things up and running. Um, uh, so I will give now to Neha, who will show you how to uh, use one of our uh integrators here um and um show you how you can uh connect your application to data cake so thank you kevin yeah, go for it let me just share my screen okay can you see my screen yes okay. yes so um, as Kevin mentioned, I will be using the application getting started because uh, the application he just made um, didn't work out, uh, but it's fine. Um, if you go to the integrations menu um, on the left hand, um, and uh, you will see a bunch of integrations that uh, the thing stack offers. Um, but in this uh, session, I will just show a short demo of using uh, the webhook integration feature. Uh, so you click uh, on webhooks and click the plus add webhook button. So uh, here, uh, as Kevin already mentioned, uh, you have uh, these few um, uh, webhook templates uh, that are basically um, uh, doing the same as this custom webhook, uh, it's only um, uh, like um, the information uh, that uh, the user uh, needs to fill out by himself, uh, while the um, other data that is um, uh, constant uh, is uh, hidden from the user. So, um, uh, for our potential integrators, we can always um, uh, define one of these uh, webhook templates so uh, that you have your own integration file like this uh, in our uh, the thing stack. Uh, the LoRaWAN webhook templates are available in our public uh, GitHub repository, so you can check it out uh, by yourself. Uh, but you can also always uh, reach out to us and uh, we can assist on creating one. So uh, for this session, um, I um, uh, decided to use uh, a data cake webhook template uh, to create an integration uh, with data cake. So why do I need an integration uh, in the first place? Well, uh, if you are building an IoT system that's using the thing stack as a LoRaWAN network server, you will probably want to use some kind of um, third-party application to, uh, be, uh, to be able to visualize your data uh, or to just monitor it uh, in a more comprehensive way than just uh, to look at the messages and search for fields and stuff. Um, uh, you always, um, uh, it's always useful to uh, store that data in some kind of database or something. Uh, so this is one way uh, of um, connecting to those third-party platforms that can help you with um, additional features that aren't offered um, uh, with uh, the thing stack. So um, I, uh, in this session, I will uh, connect uh, to DataCake uh, via webhook integration, and I will show you how to uh, visualize the sensor data uh, that's um, uh, present here uh, in the uh, in the thing stack. And uh, I will also show you how to schedule a downlink message uh, to be sent uh, to your end device. Um, uh, that's also useful uh, because you can uh, send some kind of uh, alerts or something. So um, uh, first thing you need to do before creating uh, a webhook integration with DataCake uh, is to uh, create um, 
uh, a user account in DataKit, uh, and after you have created a user account, uh, you will need to add a device. Uh, you can do that by uh, navigating to devices on the left-hand menu and clicking the Add Device button in the upper right corner. So here, um, you need to choose the generic LoRa device. Uh, also, I want to uh, emphasize that uh, all these steps uh, are, um, are really uh, uh, covered in uh, detail uh, in our documentation. Um, but also in the data cake documentation. So if someone is interested in details, you can always um, read it and uh, see step-by-step uh, -step, um, uh, solution. So I will click on the generic LoRa device and here uh, click skip. And then I will choose this, uh, the things uh, industries adapter. Uh, this adapter will probably need uh, some rebranding because um, uh, the thing stack uh, will um, uh, be deployed uh, in the things network, but that's a whole another story. So I will just uh, click the things uh, industries uh, and choose my plan and click next. So here, uh, I need to provide uh, some kind of name for my device on DataKit. Um, I will use um, a workshop device. And I need to provide a, dev, a device uh, EUI, which I can obtain if I go back to the Things stack. Uh, I go uh, to my application click uh, on Arduino Uno because that's a device uh, that I want to send data from and uh, copy this uh, device uh, EUI. I will go back to DataKit, paste that device EUI and click the Add Device button. Okay, so now uh, I added uh, a device to DataKit and um, I am ready to create a web of integration um, so I am going back to the Things stack, going back to webhooks and clicking uh, on the Add webhook and choosing DataKit webhook template. So I will just need to provide some kind of webhook ID and we can use something like DataKit integration. And I need to provide an API token from DataKit, uh, which is uh, also um, the only information needed uh, to send uh, the data to DataKit. Uh, so I need to go back to DataKit. Uh, I will click on my avatar, then on Edit Profile, choose API, show my token, and then just copy it to clipboard and paste it here. Now I'm basically uh, provided, I provided all the info needed and I will click the Create Data Cake Webhook button. So if I go back to Data Cake and go to the Debug tab and just wait, uh, I will see that the raw data from uh, the things uh, stack uh, is coming to uh, data cake platform, but we can see that uh, payload decoder didn't uh, return any uh, certain measurements. Uh, basically, this data is coming um, uh, in a format that's uh, not really um, comprehensible, let's say it like that. It's uh, coded, so we need to decode it. Um, uh, in order to decode the data, I will just switch to the configuration tab and scroll down uh, to the OLRVAN section and expand the payload decoder section. So um, I already know the structure of the data that uh, this uh, device uh, that we are using, it's called Arduino Uno. Um, I already know that the first byte uh, is showing temperature. So um, I will define a field that's um, uh, saying about uh, the variable uh, I'm sending or the sensor me measurements I'm sending. And here I will just select the first byte and click Save Changes. In the Fields section, uh, you need to add a new field 
um, to be able to kind of store uh, those decoded values uh, in a certain field to be able to visualize them later, which I will also show you. So I'm creating a field, let's uh, call it workshop field. No, that's it, sorry. Um, the type will be float since that's the format we need for um, our, the data we're sending. And I uh, set the Celsius degrees as a unit. And I click saving changes. Now I will switch back to the debug tab. And we will see that the um, returned value uh, is now 31. Uh, which is showing uh, 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 the sensor measurements of the temperature uh, for the Arduino Uno device. I'm not sure where this device is, but wherever it is, it's <laughs> pretty warm in there. Um, and we can also see that recorded measurements uh, in the temperature field uh, are storing that value um, uh, from our decoder. So in order to visualize this data now, uh, I will switch back to the dashboard um, and um, enable this to uh, be able to add a widget. Uh, I will visualize this data as a chart. Um, in the devices tab, I need to add, okay, something fuzzy here, but I will refresh. In the Devices tab, I need to add the device, choose that field I created just now. Um, I will choose a line chart because um, I want to see that uh, in that format. And in the time frame um, uh, tab, I will choose uh, to view the, uh, the data from this hour with a resolution uh, of one minute. So if I click Save Changes, and toggle this. Um, now uh, I am able to see the real-time graph, uh, line graph uh, of the sensor data showing temperature uh, that the Arduino Uno device uh, is sending uh, to the thing stack. So uh, you can see that uh, it's pretty easy to create uh, a web integration with, uh, especially if uh, we have uh, collaborated on creating a webhook template for um, a platform. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, it's pretty easy and it can get uh, really interesting to see this uh, uh, on a chart. So, um, uh, the next thing I want to show is uh, scheduling downlinks uh, from DataCake, um, which are being uh, sent to the thing stack and then uh, the thing stand, the stack is sending that data to the end device. So uh, I switch back to the configuration tab and I will scroll down to the lower end section where I need to enter some kind of information in these fields here. Uh, so the first uh, information that I need to provide is uh, the dev uh, ID, that is device ID from the thing stack. So I'm going uh, back to the thing stack, choosing my device and uh, copying uh, end device ID value. I will just paste that here. Uh, next thing I need to provide uh, is a TTI server URL, which is basically uh, if you uh, look at this um, uh, URL here, uh, this part uh, saying EUI, um, EU1. Uh, dot cloud dot the things dot network. The next value is an application ID. So I'm going back to the things stack, uh, going back to my application, and under general information, I can find the application ID, copy it to clipboard, and just paste it here. Uh, the last thing I need uh, is uh, an API key, so I will create a new one by uh, going back to the thing stack, navigating to the API keys uh, on the left-hand menu, and clicking the Add API Key button. I will call it something like Data Cake API Key, and I will grant rights for writing down link application traffic a reading application traffic and a writing application uh, uplink traffic. 
and click, click uh, the API key. Uh, now I will copy this uh, key to clipboard and uh, confirm that I have copied it. Go back to data cake and just paste it in this field here. Uh, after you have uh, filled in all these fields, uh, just click Save Changes. And now we can head over to Downlinks. Uh, in the downlinks section, uh, you need to uh, click the plus add downlinks sign. And um, we need to give a name for this downlink. I will name it something like data cake downlinks. And I will just enter some random value here, like two bytes um, to be sent to my device. I don't want to go further in details here, but just to show you that uh, this feature is something that's really uh, easy to achieve. So I'm clicking the Save Downlink button. Uh, in the Things stack, I will navigate to my end device and to the Live Data uh, tab to be able to uh, kind of catch these uh, downlinks once I uh, schedule them for sending. So now, uh, when I have uh, prepared this uh, downlink structure, I will just click the Send Downlink button. And uh, in this Live Data tab on my device, uh, we can see that uh, the downlink messages uh, with the uh, format, uh, with the payload uh, I defined, uh, it's these two bytes, uh, 0, 2, and 0, 4, uh, is being sent to uh, the end device. Uh, so. Uh, that's basically it uh, for me, um, and I just want to emphasize once more that uh, if uh, there is someone interested in um, adding their uh, platform as uh, an integration to the Think Stack, um, uh, you can uh, reach out to us and we will be happy to assist. If you have any questions, just paste them in the chat. Back to Ben, or? Yeah, hey. OK. Um, so we walked through just about everything that I think people would want to do when they're getting started in the ThinkStack. Uh, hopefully, that was helpful for people. We, um, we added a gateway using Basic Station. We added an application, which used to manage your devices. And then Kevin added a device and showed how to use both really simple webhook integrations and the storage integration, which persists data from devices. And then Neira showed us how to uh, connect to a third party service and uh, to visualize data, and then also to schedule down links from the um, from a th So um, if anybody has any questions, uh, we'll stick around for a little bit in the chat. Um, and it looks like Laurens is asking, uh, asking a question for Neira about what her favorite uh, third-party integration is. But yeah, please, if you have any questions, uh, we're here. Um, and there's lots of ways to get uh, get a hold of us in the future also if you have questions. So thanks for watching. Um, and we really encourage everybody to go over and uh, and get started themselves using uh, TTNB3. So the, um, I'll post the, the link again in the chat. And um, everybody who already has a the Things Network V2 account can get started right away. And uh, everybody else can, of course, sign up to use the Things Network on the Things stack. Thanks for watching, guys. Everyone. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Will we answer the questions in the chat or live? I, uh, feel free to stay all alive and uh, and see if any questions come in, but um, no pressure to. I think uh, people people know how to get a hold of us if they have questions later. So, ah, yeah, okay, so but you have, you you have some preference questions here in the chat about uh, what your favorite third party. Is. <laughs> I'll let you answer those. Yeah, well, um, if you don't have a huge budget, I would say um, I don't know Data Cake uh, or. Um, um, Ubidots is also very cool, and they are providing um, uh, these, uh, this new feature. Um, uh, they used to not support uh, uh, this uh, integration on the stem plan, which is free, but now uh, 
uh, in, uh, I, I guess, uh, these few days, uh, they should be announcing, they actually announced that on their, uh, on their session, they are um, uh, creating uh, these uh, sort of uh, something similar like our webhook templates, but just on UbiDots, which is going to allow uh, users from that are using the uh, free uh, STEM plan uh, to use um, uh, the things that integration. So I guess uh, that's that's also great um, uh, because that's um, uh, 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 an integration with really cool features. Um, I also uh, like I don't know Akenza. Um, and we have uh, an opportunity to integrate with uh, a lot of third-party platforms. Uh, some of them uh, are, um, are offering some stuff uh, for free, um, uh, but I don't know, everyone has their own preferences. I so wrote a really great uh, integration example about uh, using the LR110 or LR, LR, LR1110 to map um, geographical data using UB dots. Yeah, I can paste it if someone's in. I think there's a question for you. Uh, is there any way to filter live data in the console? That's a very useful feature in V2. Yeah, that's indeed very useful. And um, Currently, it's not possible, but um, we are aware of that demand and uh, we are working on adding that as soon as possible. Um, uh, so, yeah, it will be possible to filter on the message type um, and uh, yeah, maybe even on regex. Um, so we have some ideas there going and uh, it will be there very soon. question about when TTN v3 will be available in Australia, which Johan just answered. Um, we'll send out a newsletter and it's scheduled for me. Okay, we don't have any more questions coming in. Um, what's yeah. wrong? Let's see. Uh, just, Adrian. Adrian hasn't had it. Do you see my screen now? Yep. Uh, yeah, I just want to say uh, it finally joined. <laughs> so I don't know. I think it's really my wonky connection, I guess, which you also saw. Uh, but now you can see the the, the node joined here, and uh, I've also set up a small uh, uh, sample app which uh, pulls, uh, uh, which gets data from the storage integration or also from the webhooks. Uh, okay, the webhooks I didn't set up yet. But uh, yeah, just want to say it's working. It just needed a couple more uh, attempts to connect. Cool. Yeah, I think that's a, a so Kevin wrote a really simple app to um, to receive webhooks from the things stack um, and then also to query the thing stack for data that's stored in the things or in the storage integration. Um, uh, and so it, it's a really nice how easy it is to also create your own custom integrations with just a couple, I think you just wrote a couple lines um, of JavaScript using a, a little node uh, server. And, oops. And um, Stephen Thomas, uh, sorry, the, the announcement um, is scheduled for mid-February for Australia TTNV3. Dimitri asks, can I build a gateway from an ESP32? I don't know uh, what, um, what kind of skills you would need to do that. I do know that the, um, the things indoor gateway is based on an Espressive chip, although I'm not sure exactly which one, um, but I imagine it's close to possible. Um, Yeah, confirmed uh, the new things in the gateway is using the ESP32 and the Guillaume states that a micro gateway is possible. Um, yeah, but you'll have to do a little bit of research yourself if you want to, uh, to actually build a gateway. Um, it's probably easier to buy one. There's no new 
the things uh, indoor gateway, Dirk. Um, can gateways filter on application ID um, in, in, in what way? So you mean in the in the data view that you say, I want I only want to see um, uh, messages from this application ID. Um, it's that's that's a bit hard because the, the the gateway has no knowledge of uh, but um we have some ideas for this as well so what we also want to do is message tracing i don't know if i'm breaking off but um but yeah we have some ideas there so uh, that you will be able to uh, maybe go through right from the gateway view to uh, an end device if that is owned by yourself. Uh, so just like a click through, uh, that is what is planned as well. And maybe also in general, if, if any of you guys uh, have any um, ideas um, for features or if you notice any bugs, um, always feel free to go to our um, uh, open source repository. Uh, I can also, uh, just for completeness, we'll uh, paste the, the Feel free to have any suggestion. Uh, we're always super happy to, to get uh, suggestions for new features or uh, reports for of bugs. And then also you will be able to track the progress on this uh, instantly. So everyone is super welcome to um, to submit issues or even submit pull requests if you want to. Uh, that is also super welcome. Um, so yeah, uh, go in there and uh, go crazy. Uh, we would be really happy to see it. I've known for being super responsive, so don't be afraid to reach out. Exactly. So yeah, Geom, that's exactly it. So if you want to contribute, it is definitely possible. Just go to the link that I posted. And um, we also have which shows you how to get Um, yeah, so I don't see any new questions. Um, let's see, Adrian, uh, can you talk about some of the, um, the devices that you have in your house? Uh, you for me, uh, I generally have a couple of sensors that I use for development. So I have uh, some of the, some of the nodes, I have some of the, um, LoRa modem enabled devices, so I have an indeed an LR11 tracker that I use for development. Um, I have an old Murata modem back from then. Um, I don't really do much collection in my house, but I do have data available that I uh, I store. So there is a sensor in my room. Uh, there are about five gateways in the whole house, uh, in about two per level. So uh, I have a lot of LoRa LoRa equipment at home, but I mainly use it for development. Cool, thanks. Yeah, it's always cool to hear people who are actually working on lower and back and uh, use, the, use the technology themselves. Um, yeah, so I guess I don't see any new questions coming in. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's easy to get a hold of us. Uh, if you need to, we're in the chat at the TTI booth. Um, or uh, send us an email, uh, create an issue in the LoRaWAN stack, uh, GitHub repository. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully this was helpful for everybody, and uh, we look forward to to hearing more from you guys. Um, I think I'll let everybody go now. So thank you for watching. Yes, indeed. Thank Thanks you everybody. very much. Thank you everyone, and have a nice day. I hope you're enjoying the conference as well. See you, everybody.